have a full um, meeting this morning until 10 o'clock. The House is back on the floor at 10. We um, have with us Jesse Beck from Freeman French and Freeman with some other folks. And we also have with us, I want to welcome our counterpart in the Senate, uh, Senator Benning, who is uh, the chair of the Senate Institutions Committee. He will be with us for a short period of time as the Senate is convening on the floor about quarter after nine, 9.30. So welcome. Um, and I'm going to quickly turn it over to Jesse Beck from Freeman French and Freeman um, that did the legislative space, health, and safety study to quickly start walking us through. Um, hopefully we'll be able to finish in an hour, but I'm not sure. So Jesse, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And if you could just identify yourself for the record before you start, would be great. And introduce Perfect. anyone else you might've brought with you. Sure. Um, my name is Jesse Beck, architect with Freeman French Freeman. And with me is Jane Pakel, our interior designer who worked on the study with me and others here at Freeman French Freeman. So she's also available to answer questions. So before we get started, just for the audience, um, we're also having a technical issue with posting the report up on our webpage. Um, Phil, if they go to our webpage on their laptop or iPad, would they be able to access the report? Or not. No, they, they can't access it. Uh, Duncan Goss is working on it now. Okay. Well, we'll do the best that we can with what we have. Uh, Kevin Moore has his hand up, Madam Chair. Okay, Kevin. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, you can find the report underneath Jesse's name or, or Jane's name, whoever it was posted underneath. It's just not posting by date at the moment. Duncan is working on that as we speak. So if you go under witness name and search for it on the committee information page, you should be able to find it. Okay. And also note that Jesse's name is in that list twice and only one of them shows the correct document. Another one shows previous testimony. Well, we'll do the best we can with what we have at the moment. Let me know when you want me to uh, share my screen, Jesse, and I can bring up the report. Okay, I think uh, for now, I'll just keep my remarks brief, uh, walk through a few of the highlights, and it's probably best to get to people's questions and spend the time that way. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, we are. It's all yours, Jesse. All right, thank you. So like you said, this is really was a space study, see how we could uh, mitigate returning legislators uh, to session in uh, both the state house and other facilities in central Vermont. Um, we had worked with Janet's team to come up with a list of, of likely uh, buildings and areas to, to look at, which is listed in the report. Um, the, the charge really is to look at a full return of the legislators a hybrid model where maybe there's a partial return or alternate day return. And then of course, there's always continue working remotely like you have been doing as an option. Um, there is an executive summary in the report which, which hits some of these highlights. Uh, but I think I wanted to talk a little bit about how we, how we went about this, what, what the methods were. And uh, Jan and I and others have been doing this for other clients and facilities, uh, looking at uh, capacities uh, of buildings, looking at mitigation measures. Um, there's a, a list in here about uh, how to be safe or how to reduce the risk of getting COVID. Uh, BGS has a, a wonderful resource uh, on their web pages about uh, some of the details of, of safely returning. Um, and the American Institute of Architects also has a tremendous resource about how to do this. So those are all listed in our, in our resource pages of the report. Um, 
the way we went about this um, was to not only identify buildings, but create the criteria for our study. Namely, uh, we use circles to measure spaces and we have furniture in our spaces that we have to work around with our circles. So um, we use a seven foot diameter circle, which takes into consideration a person's head size and body, uh, which is, we threw in a foot. And then we use a six foot on top of that to get the social distancing um, to be what we like it to be for each room. So that's why in the back of the report in the building diagrams, you see a lot of circles, you see some furniture in committee rooms uh, because um, you have to take into consideration how a room is, is set up. Um, in, in our methods, we, we considered uh, elements like IT capabilities, um, check-in and safety of checking in uh, parking, food service, um, and restrooms, and ADA accessibility. So th these are some of the elements that we applied to all of the building scenarios. Um, the report has a, a fold out or 11 by 17 listing the, the various facilities uh, by area. Um, within the capital complex and regional facilities like the Waterbury State Office Building, the Berry Opera House, and, and others. Um, so when evaluating this, we, we started out with uh, the State House and started drawing our capacity circles into the various rooms to just see what, what could happen within the state house. And we very quickly understood that there's no way that there could be a full return to the state house, which is uh, fairly logical. And I think everybody realized that. Uh, so then it was a matter of, of how many and where else to put them. Um, and we came up with, with different scenarios. So uh, to cut to sort of the, the the option is if there is a joint session, meaning everyone has to be there, the only option that, that we could really find close in central Vermont available to us was, a Barry, uh, was the uh, Berry Auditorium. And so those diagrams are, are in the report and the capacities. Um, the, the next step was, well, how, how does the Senate meet? How does the House meet? And what are those capacities? The, the House chamber um, can only fit 70. So that would mean if the full House met, it would have to be in the Berry Auditorium. Or, or you go to that uh, partial scenario where 70 could meet in the house and the rest would meet elsewhere. Uh, for the Senate, um, let's see, our Senate capacity is less. Um, let me see. Uh, Jane, what was the Senate capacity um, in the chamber? It's on page 15 of the report. Okay. Right, we're looking for up to 45, that's including press. Well, we, we could fit 27 in the Senate chamber uh, according to our social distancing measurements. So 70 in the House, 27 in the Senate chamber, which mean they'll have to do a partial return um, or find another location. We then drill down to the committee rooms. Um, and so for the house, that meant finding 15 spaces, 15 rooms uh, to meet their, their capacity requirements. And for the Senate, that meant finding 11 rooms. Um, so 
So in the summary of findings, uh, you can find that on page 21 and 22. Um, you'll see that we can find the 26 total rooms that we need for committees in facilities in and around the state capitol complex, um, the Waterbury State Office building, uh, and other locations. So Becky, can I interrupt, uh, Becky, yeah. Jesse, can I interrupt right here in terms, when you said you could find the space in different locations, would that allow all those committees to be meeting at the same time? Uh, yes, yep. If you are able to staff uh, properly, uh, provide safe access, I mean, check-in stations, uh, those spaces are available to to occupy. And I think what's what's a, a good tool to look at is the there's two documents that we issued after the 19th, um, which I think someone has, I'm not sure if they were handed out or not, but one is a move in ready spaces. It's a straight list, a listing from both the state house, 133 state, 109 state, national life, uh, Schumeyer Hall, um, Barry Civic Center and Waterbury State Office buildings. It's a list of all of the rooms that we feel are fairly straightforward to move into and their capacities. Um, yeah, there you go. So for members that want to ask a question, you'll have to physically raise your hand because with my screen, I can't see the participant list. Uh, Butch? Well, for Jesse, so these documents you're looking at now, uh, I have the report in my hand and obviously there looks like they're not in the report. So these would have been, uh, if we could get them up on our legislative uh, committee website so we can look at them later. Yes, yeah. I will do that. Okay. Um, it's just that the report is, is very lengthy. Um, and this was one way to give you a, a, a little easier document to go right down through a straight list of, of available spaces without a lot of construction work or upgrades. Um, so you could see where the rooms are, what the room capacities are, and, uh, and if they're ready to move into or whether they need furniture. So did I hear you say that these rooms are also currently unoccupied? Uh, most of them are, yes. Thank you. Well, wh when I say unoccupied, like the Waterbury State Office Building has you know, five or six conference rooms that have furniture in them. Uh, they aren't truly occupied during COVID because of the work from home orders. Uh, they are in use as a state resource. Uh, so that's an example of areas that we have put on the list. I, I guess what I meant by unoccupied would not normally occupied by staff, state staff. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, some of these definitely uh, like the state office building are normally occupied. Is that is that what you mean? I was thinking more of the rooms that you've identified, conference rooms and those type of things. Are, are we? I guess the, sh the easy question is: do, Are we throw? Are we thinking about throwing somebody out of their space? On this on this move-in ready list, the answer is we we did not uh, throw anybody out of their existing spaces. Thank you. The, the other document that, that uh, is illustrative of path one, uh, which is a full return of a legislature uh, to their spaces using Barry, Montpelier and Waterbury to try to illustrate uh, a path with the joint session being in Barry, the house chamber being in Barry, house committee rooms in these 
facilities on the list that I mentioned before and how we could accommodate uh, the 15 rooms uh, for the House and the 11 rooms for the, for the uh, Senate. Madam Chair? Yes. I'm just, I'm wondering if we could stop sharing the screen so we, if, if unless there's a document there, just, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Um, Kurt. Kurt, and now I can see the participant list so people can just raise their blue hand. Kurt? Um, when you say that a, when you're determining that a committee can use a certain room, are you taking into account all the committee members and the legislative, uh, the committee assistant or anybody else, or is it just, just, the, just the committee? It's the committee uh, plus um, two support, um, two public, um, and an additional uh, person. So we, we took the, the largest committee size and added a few people so it's not an open room for as many people as you can put into it, but there are limitations that are stated in the report. Okay. Uh, Felicia? Um, quick question. With the list of rooms that was provided, are all of them currently equipped with proper AV equipment to keep things streaming the way they need to be if we're not allowing the public in? Or is that modifications that we need to take into account? Um, each space is different and yes, modifications will have to happen for IT and those are illustrated in the cost report. Okay, thank you. And that's something we'll have to look at too because we put money, I believe it's around 750,000 of CRF dollars for um, costs associated with us returning. And a lot of that is equipment, <clears throat> IT equipment. And I know Kevin at this point really needs some direction in terms of starting to order some of this equipment because it's going to take time to receive it. So we'll have to get into the cost analysis at some point here. OK. No more questions, so Jesse, you can continue. Um, I, th I think it, it's probably good to just go with questions at this point, um, unless, unless there's something specific within the report that uh, you'd like me to review. So uh, one question I have on, you're talking about the Senate <clears throat> committee rooms. You know, the Senate has morning committees and afternoon committees. Um, so they're basing it on 11 committee rooms, I believe, for the Senate. Um, wouldn't they be able to share space in terms of their morning committee could meet and then use that same space for an afternoon committee? That is a possibility, but we, we took the most conservative approach finding 11 rooms. OK. Okay, um, Catherine has a question here. Actually, I just have a comment because I think um, the Freeman French of Freeman Report has a nice summary, and I just um, a short-term summary on their findings, and they they've got three options laid out, which I think Jesse pointed to. But but one of the trade-offs is if you think about a full return of the legislature, um, you know the logistics. You're not all centrally located, the logistics and the expenses get to be more, if you do more of a hybrid, you're closer together, possibly physically, and it may cost less, but you have to, you may have to share more rooms. It's, there's no perfect answer. I just want to say, just because you've got rooms um, all over, having people in Waterbury and having people in Montpelier and having people in other places creates a different set of, um, you know, it complicates everybody's life in different ways. So there's no simple, I think the short story is there's no simple solution, but they have laid out, I think they've made it clear what can work in the state house committee rooms and what other options are. And then um, the legislature is gonna have to come up with some kind of figure out what the priorities are because we're not gonna have perfection. Um, 
in any of these. It's not going to go back to what it was. So you're all going to have to decide what the trade-offs, what, what you care most about and what you're willing to compromise on. For example, sharing rooms or committees not meeting every day. So house committees could share rooms. You know, I, I, that's a choice that somebody is going to have to make at some point. Um, and they have laid out a lot of options which is why the report is long, actually, but I think the floor plans are really helpful for people to see um, who can fit into what spaces. Uh, but the costs are also, you know, you have more rooms, you have more security, more buildings, you will have more security costs, more AV equipment, and they speak to, they have some rough ballpark estimates also in the report, which I thought was very helpful. And Catherine, thank you. Um, we have some other questions, Kurt and then Sarah. Uh, yes, you used a six foot distance between people. Is that right? It's actually a seven foot circle because of your head, your body takes up space. So to get the safe six foot distance, we use seven foot diameter circles. Seven foot diameter circle. Oh, I see. Okay. Seven so does, I understand. So what happens if um, CDC or the governor's uh, recommendations changes to three feet instead of a six foot distance between people. Is it easy for you to modify the report or is this, well, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning? Uh, well, it's, it's just redoing diagrams to see how many people you can then foot, uh, fit into a space. Okay. Uh, Sarah, uh, I'm going to jump to Senator Benning, if that's okay, Sarah, because I know he's on a time schedule. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I do have to leave momentarily, but uh, Jesse, I'm not sure you were party to the conversation that the Joint Legislative Management Committee was having. Um, there's another way of looking at this, and I don't mean to uh, disparage my colleagues in the House, but the overwhelming numbers of people in the House create a problem all by itself. And when you're talking about sharing committee rooms, if you focus solely on the Senate for a moment, our morning committees could meet in their rooms normally and have witnesses and staff in another Senate room that's not currently being used if they had access via video so that technically they're all meeting together. You can't do that with the House committee rooms. So the idea of dividing and conquering our problem uh, may be a way to think about this in the long term. My concern is that we're trying to get both bodies into the building in some fashion. And I don't know how that's going to work under the current circumstances without a decrease in the number of feet suggested for social distancing. But it's just a thought I wanted to send out there that there is a way to divide and conquer this problem if we focus on one body in particular, which is the House, uh, because you have such overwhelming numbers. And I'm not sure how to placate folks, um, but at this point, I just wanted to leave you with that thought that the Senate could function in its normal environment for committee purposes, if I understand the foot distance correctly, if we shared our rooms morning and after and divided the committee members themselves from the witnesses and staff that may be appearing to help them, assuming we have the technological equipment to have that happen. It would eliminate the Senate from the equation of how to fix this problem. And that's just one thing to think about as we go forward. With that, Madam Chair, I, I'm afraid I have to sign off, especially before anybody wants to yell at me. <laughs> well, the one thing I would say on that, I don't disagree, but the optics are there's only one body that's then in the state house and not the other body. And that that's an issue because we're equal branches. We're equal yeah. bodies. So well, I, I understand the, the optic there doesn't look very good. <laughs> yep. no, I understand the predicament. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And that, that's one reason that move in ready list is, is good because it shows you all the rooms in the state house in their capacities. And then you can fight over who uses which room. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Sarah and then Felicia. That's the fighting over which who gets to use which room is is kind of where I'm coming from. I, I was part of my question was to ask um, Senator Benning about where um, his thinking from uh, the Joint Legislative Management Committee because I did uh, was and I did listen in on some of that discussion. Um, one of the the <laughs> things I read in this report is a recommendation that a decision be made by September first, and today is September first. Um, so I'm, so I, po I just am kind of laying that out there. Clearly, we're not going to make a decision by September 1st. Um, and one of the things I wanted to ask as much of the, the folks who, um, uh, Janet Miller and um, Kevin Moore were also part of the discussions with, there were meetings over the summer with Freeman French, um, uh, with uh, the Freeman French Freeman folks. Um, one of the questions I have is anybody who has a child who's going back to school or college um, has seen how we have, have all had to rethink what that looks like and what that means. And one of the things I'm hearing from my colleagues is like we all are pining for the way of going back to the state house as the way it was. And I, I do think we're gonna have to really shift the way we think about that during this pandemic. I don't think it's gonna be the Senate coming back and doing business as usual and the house doing something different. I, I really think if we have to be thinking about this hybrid approach, that means that some of our work is in person and some of it continues to be remote um, and that it's not gonna look the same. So I don't, that's a big kind of um, mental shift for all of us. I know that I had to do that with thinking about my daughter going back to college. And I also know that they, to do that, the college spent a lot of time going through all the details. And so I, I just wanna lay out my concern about our timeline or what, what Madam Chair, if, you're, if you have a sense of when this decision, when we can make this decision and how we can, might be able to do it. Cause I, I know that it's gonna, from the time that we make a decision, there's gonna be a lot of work that needs to be done by folks like um, Sergeant in Arms and, the, and Kevin Moore. I'm not sure what the timeline is going to be. The decision is not going to be made by the full legislature. Um, it will be made with conversations, I'm assuming, with our leadership, along with our Chief Romeo, along with our Sergeant at Arms, Janet Miller, and along with our IT folks, Kevin Moore. These are not isolated conversations, but the whole legislature is not going to be voting on this in way and making that decision. Um, I'm not sure of the timeline. I don't know if Janet can weigh in on this. I know that there is a time issue with IT with Kevin Moore in if we're doing any remote from any of the spaces, either within the Montpelier area or Waterbury area or Barry, there needs to be IT investments and he has to place some orders for that equipment. So time is of the essence in that phase. So I don't know if Janet, if you can weigh in a little bit on this. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, Janet Miller, Sergeant at Arms, just for the record. Um, we are working with the administration right now to see about uh, what is readily available for us. I think a little bit has changed after the report has come out. And for various reasons, as Catherine was talking about regarding security staff, I think the thinking is we'd like to um, be as close to the lawn of the, uh, or as the Capitol. Uh, and so we're working with uh, Jennifer and Joe and all the folks at BGS to see if there's some other pieces of property in right in the area that we can do. And I think for Kevin's purposes, um, some of the stuff that he'll have to order will be standard. So I think there's going to be some movement on that, but I would let Kevin weigh in on that. So I think that what we're going to do is see what spaces are actually going to work. And uh, Freeman French and Freeman has looked at a few of the spaces definitely that we're looking at now there's one more additional space over in 
the uh, 109 that might work for us. We thought for a moment that the security would not work there because the governor is there, but I think that's uh, not an issue. So um, I think we will be moving forward quickly and being able to at least have the rooms. It's not gonna be our decision as to who goes where. <laughs> our decision, we'll have the rooms and the capacity. And then someone above my pay grade is gonna have to figure out who's going where. Bobby Starr should get first pick. <laughs> yeah, right. Is he listening? <laughs> um, so, uh, Janet, is it fair to say that right now the work is between the legislative branch and the executive branch with the administration trying to figure out the space? And one of the priorities is really trying to stay with it around the, the lawn space in front of the state house. Yes, I think that's fair to say in uh, buildings and general services, they've been really working hard to, with us to try to hone, hone in on this and figure out what we're, what they can accommodate us and what would need to be outfitted a little bit better so that the legislature can do their work. Okay, thank you. Uh, Felicia? Thank you. Um... I didn't see it considered, and I don't mean to give David Sheets a heart attack. Um, can the walls be modified in House committee rooms? I, I know that walls were put up. You can see that in the architecture to divide that further, but can they be taken back down? And is that a reasonable time frame? What walls are you thinking of? Between our committee room and I believe it's House Education, where one of the bookcases is was clearly a doorway previously. I've heard that reference more than once. I just, looking at the building having been in there, that space was divided up further to make more rooms. Can that be reversed to make larger rooms? Uh, Janet? Yes, I think these walls are thicker than you think. And I think for any construction like that- It's major. It wouldn't really, it wouldn't really Yep, it really wouldn't give us much uh, more space, really wouldn't even be still be able to have a large committee in there probably, but maybe Jesse can weigh in on that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we were looking at short-term solutions as being able to be accomplished by January and any significant construction project like that would certainly take longer than than the, the three, four months that, that's available. So uh, we talked about that. Um, the rooms really can only accommodate about four people each. <laughs> so even if you took a wall down, you'd have a room of eight. Um, so long-term solution, yeah, maybe you can make construction modifications to the state house, but you're also dealing with a historic structure. And there's a long list of protocols and analysis before you start moving and taking walls down in the state house. So we, we kind of ruled that out at this point, uh, but certainly there's, there's long-term issues that, that can be further studied out of this report. Yeah, I, and I figured that might be the answer. Um, I'm just really concerned that we're not really considering just sneeze guards or plastic sheets or like really genuine short-term changes. I think moving committee rooms outside of the state house, which will be necessary for us to meet in person, is really a paradigm shift in the way that the legislature operates. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we're looking at this as a one session or half a biennium kind of thing, then we're, we're not really being realistic about what it takes to move an entire body outside the state house and then back in. And I, I guess I'm just trying to advocate that we consider some more long-term changes in more of a three to five year reference point um, than just a three to four month reference point. Because I, I don't think that this is going to be as short as we want it to be. And I don't think once we move people out, we get them all back in as quickly as we want to. And on to that point, I think I'm, I'm really 
advocating that if possible, we focus on solutions that keep us inside the complex. Because I am very concerned about being committee rooms across to Waterbury, across to Barry, and then some in Montpelier, both on perception and functionability. Well, one, one comment, which was interesting that came out of this report when we are interviewing various people <clears throat> working in the state house is that we did a report uh, a few months back uh, about how, how packed the state house is for staff and people using the building. And at that point in time, everyone felt the absolute need <clears throat> to occupy and be in the state house. <clears throat> This time around when we interviewed everybody, they pointed out how they didn't need to be in the state house and they were very uh, happy to be working remotely. And that working remotely seems to work just fine. So I think that's a, that's a big change post COVID that is gonna really help alleviate the pressure on the state house. So Jesse, I know Chief Romeo has a question, but I wanna clarify this a little bit so that was an interview with the staff. Yeah, in the back of the report, there's uh, there's meeting minutes of the people that we we met with uh, to get their input uh, mm -hmm. on the situation. And um, so there's a whole series series of folks that, that we met with uh, that have staff or departments within the state house. Mm -hmm. Because I can see if we get back into some form of person to person in some form, some of those, some of the, our staff are going to have to be with us and not remote. Oh yeah, I'm not saying everybody out. I'm saying that, that there are portions of different groups that can easily work, work remotely as long as they have one or two people or a few people in the state house. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chief Romeo. Uh, good morning, uh, Matthew Romeo, Capitol Police. Um, I was just going to uh, address the the longer term issue. I I certainly think that that's going to be a a topic for um, for the next legislative session about you know the 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 long arc of this. But at the same time, and this is to uh, Representative Coffey's point about the September 1, not necessarily deadline, but the September 1 re request for decision that, that, that we advocated for. Um, we're basically right now 120 something days from the new biennium. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's zero time in, in, in this world really. And I think that's part of what the pressure that at least that we're feeling is not only, you know, we just need to figure out what's going to happen so we can figure out what we have to do, those secondary and tertiary effects that uh, that come up from it of, of what we have to do to make sure January happens. Um, and it's um, that that grandfather clock is ticking in the background very loudly um, on the staff side. So it's just my, my thoughts. Thank you for that. And I think one thing that I think that there's probably some consensus on. Um, the first week of the session is a ceremonial week. The first week of the biennium is ceremonial. We have a lot of joint sessions. Uh, it's the inauguration of the governor. Um, from the report, it appears as if that week can be taken care of through the Barry Auditorium to a certain extent. It's how you then function beginning the following week uh, once you start breaking down into committees. So yes, time is of the essence, but of the whole decisions that we have to make, it, it appears as if the first week is semi taken care of in terms of at least having a space that can hold the 180 of us plus. Am I incorrect in that? Okay, Janet says yes. The, then the question is, I mean, it gives us a week, but it's not much. When do we go back into session, Janet? <clears throat> when is our date for going back? 
um, top of my head, is it the January 6th, I think? Is it the 6th? It's a Wednesday. Yeah, right. So it's the 6th, okay. Okay. And we're up there for three days of which Friday is not that large a day for that. Other thoughts, questions? Jana, when do you think, and Chief as well, when do you think, as I said before, these decisions are really going to be made not <clears throat> by the whole legislature during the special session. It's going to be made with more internal folks figuring this out and talking it through. Do you have any thoughts on, I don't want to put you in a corner, either one of you, but a ballpark time frame when some of these decisions are going to start to take shape and start being carried forward? Is it going to be in a couple of weeks? Is it going to be by the end of September? <clears throat> I would expect so, Madam Chair. And there's kind of some different. So the J so the, the JLMC the what the the JLMC committee. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been you know mating with them and did a presentation there. Of course, they're not the sole decision maker on this, so it's got to come from the Senate Senate rules and House rules. And the little difficulty there is. That we have to wait till the new biennium to actually, you know, have a new set of, they have to adopt rules again or, or however that works. But we're hoping right. that, you know, we can have a consensus before then. And, and I don't know what the leadership will decide as to, you know, we want the house to meet here. We want this committee. We're going to share committees, rooms. We don't really just know that. But I still think we, as the Sergeant at Arms and Kevin and uh, with the administration and the chief, we can still get the rooms ready. So I don't think that will be a problem. It's just folks may not know uh, what's exactly going to happen with those rooms right off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that is more internal to the legislative decision making. Your, your focus right now with the parties is really finding the rooms and the space and the goal is to keep it around the lawn in front of the state house. That, that's right, Madam Chair. Okay. And once those rooms and space are defined and agreed to, then you can start working on IT upgrades or furniture or what is needed there. Right. And that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, I would imagine, because we have to order stuff. Yeah, you know, and right now we're behind the curve on that. Hopefully stuff will be readily available that we need. So for stuff that we need, is some of this going to be um, like the plastic screens? Is some of it going to be the temperature scanners that we spoke about, um, items such as that? Well, as well, as far as like the acrylic and all that, that may be for some areas that Freeman, French and Freeman was talking about. But uh, as far as the screening scanners, uh, there hasn't been a decision made on that yet because there's still some, you know, controversy about a temperature check. And if that's relevant, is it relevant for us to spend the money on that at this time? Mm -hmm. So that's another question that's up in the air still. Has there been um, discussions about testing members? On a reg on a weekly basis, no. Has that and that hasn't entered any conversations because they're doing that within the schools. I'm just wondering if that's something that would happen with us. Definitely, Chief. Did you want to weigh in on that? Because so, so Madam Chair, um, there's there's a a couple things that we are kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, holding in. Um, holding in the back of our minds and there is a pathway for testing if that is uh desired um there is uh, the other i guess you could say big questions that we're we're waiting on some finality on is uh the the idea of contact tracing and the idea of um uh, entrant screening uh for the spaces and 
it's it's a certainly a topic for another day but there's there's ups and downs to all of those questions and really what it comes down to right now is we'll we'll support the 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 legislative process of whatever um whatever the legislature wants to do we've just got to we've got to have an idea of what you want for january 6th so um but but there are a lot of those things kind of floating around and i would also say at least for for kevin and, and myself uh we're we're taking some cautious steps uh trying to trying to predict the legislature which is a dangerous game uh <laughs> on the best of days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think everyone wants to get back the question is it's not going to be getting back in the normal way that we know and how we transition to a new model for at least this session. I think also the other piece, you may bring us back, what's, what's the thinking with the cafeteria and food? Um, I mean, what's the have got to eat? <laughs> so, so Madam Chair, we, we have uh, renewed the contract with our cafeteria and they've been very uh, great about uh, working with us because they know that it's not the, going to be the same amount of people that come to the state house and for them to survive and make make some money on us. But they do agree to have the cafeteria open. It may be a takeout kind of place. The cafeteria will hold up to 46, I think. But if we use some of that for committee space, uh, it, you know, that'll be limited. So if folks were here in a committee room, perhaps they could take their lunch and go back to that space because they'll be social distanced enough in that respect. Um, that's another reason, you know, to kind of stay within the within the complex may be easier on legislators. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also mobility of some legislators too. Um, that right. has to be taken into account. The other part that has to be taken into account, and this has nothing to do with with uh, our sergeant at arms or Capitol Police or the IT is where a legislator is going to be staying overnight. You know, if they're staying in a hotel at the Capitol Plaza, that might be a little different in terms of restaurants uh, or folks who are renting homes or apartments, they have more flexibility. But, uh, you know, that's in the mix too, because not all of us commute. Right. And those that do commute, are then, um, they're not so isolated because they're going back home and maybe exposed to other folks that may be carriers and then bring it back to us. So, just something to think about. Any other questions, thoughts? I, do you think, Janet, that the Joint Legislative Management Committee or any of the folks you're working with would um, entertain any thoughts or ideas that maybe this committee comes up with? Well, I think so, Madam Chair. If there's some consensus that you all think about after, because you, you're focused more on the report than maybe some of the folks at the JLMC meeting or committee. So I'm sure they would welcome your thoughts. Okay. It's 20 minutes to 10. We're back on the floor at 10. Are there any questions, further questions for Jesse on the report? Any questions of BGS or the administration while they're with us or anything the administration would like to share with us? Sarah? I'm just curious to hear about the technology with a piece of it, if Kevin could talk a little bit about his, I'm sure you've been doing some thinking and that might help us in our, our thinking through some of this. Okay, Kevin? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so to answer the, oh, excuse me, uh, Kevin Moore, uh, Director of IT for the legislature. Um, uh, to answer the question uh, kind of directly, uh, we're looking at many options at this point, uh, but without understanding the explicit spaces that we're upfitting, uh, it's very difficult to select AV equipment. 
Uh, we are bringing in equipment early to test it and make sure that we have different uh, uh, capacity uh, scalable equipment ready and available for us. Uh, we are looking at acquiring core network infrastructure uh, as we speak. That is fairly universal equipment, um, so we don't have to worry too much about where we're landing, uh, but we certainly need to uh, get that equipment uh, sooner versus later. Um, but the upfit for AV is significant. Uh, it's certainly significant. And the more time that we are uh, provided to uh, fit up those spaces, um, the better. Uh, we can react a little bit better. The, the setups will be cleaner. Um, the functionality could be greater uh, if we have enough time to continue to add components to it. Uh, we're really trying to uh, set up uh, some, some high quality spaces uh, for folks and uh, uh, anything we can do to understand the room selection sooner versus later uh, would be a, a great benefit, even at the building selection, if you will. Uh, so we can start working on that core infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Thank you, Kevin. Butch? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just for our committee, and I just want to restate what, what uh, you just said uh, for our committee mates. We are we're nothing but guests to the Joint Ma uh, Legislative and Management Committee on this operation. Uh, so anything we can do to help them or suggest to them is a great thing. I don't think we can get into the weeds. Uh, I think we have to stay at a 50,000 foot level, not going around picking out we shouldn't be picking out committee rooms, in my opinion. We shouldn't be picking out building space. Uh, well, we can we can help the joint management committee make the decision as far as the infrastructure goes. Uh, as far as there's going to be the legislation required if we move out of the state house, uh, and if we meet in a different place uh, as a joint assembly, they have a lot of work to do in that area, and they have to make some decisions pretty fast. So I think we need to stay at fifty thousand feet. And if they ask for our help, uh, we, I think we'd be more happy to help them in any way we can. Uh, but we don't have the final decision here. And I just want to remind committee members that. Thank you. Um, Catherine, you had your hand up. I, well, I think Butch just spoke to it, but I, I did want to say one of the other things that um, Freeman, French and Freeman had limited time to deal. I think they may have mentioned this, the air quality. And so some, as we narrow down to specific rooms, BGS is also helping speak to the ventilation and also some of the rooms that um, may have been occupied in the drawings may, you know, they may have, they, they may be storage rooms with people's stuff that can be moved out. So BGS is working with us on, on considering some of these um, alternatives. So it was very helpful to have Freeman, French and Freeman at least scope out rooms, even if they were occupied, because in fact, some of them may be uh, available. But ventilation is gonna be another part of the discussion that will be ongoing, it may not be fully resolved. And then frankly, also, if you have ventilation problems and you can put in a filter, but you also have to make sure you can hear the sound that you're not messing with the sound because some people are gonna be um, watching you virtually. So um, there's a lot that goes into this. There is a lot because we touch the legislative um, work touches everything, it seems. It's not just us in isolation. It's folks coming in to testify as Vermonters needing access to their government. Um, it's us needing access to our staff. And it's also us having access to each other as colleagues to do our work. Um, and all the logistics around that. So we need to finish up here because we need to sign on to Zoom to get on to the floor at 10 o'clock. Any other uh, parting thoughts, Jess, Jesse, at all on this? I think you have a lot of really, really good options. Um, and if there's any follow-up questions, anything else that you need uh, that you see within this report or outside this report, we're, we're here to help. So please call. Well, I want to thank you for all the work you've done for state government, starting way back before Waterbury. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've been a great asset to us and have really helped us make some very, very difficult decisions. So I want to give accolades to you to thank you for all the work that you've been doing on our behalf. It's mm -hmm. greatly appreciated. Thank you. And we've enjoyed it. Yes. We'll call on you again, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs>
Please do. Yeah. Anything it. else? For, anything else for the committee before we sign off of YouTube? If not, thank you all, and we're gonna sign off and then kick over to the floor. Thank you.